candy. <laughs> Hopefully they brought us back to Mexico <laughs> and uh, people outside get that done. Why do I feel so <laughs> This video. This video. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Durham City Council to order at 7 o'clock on August the 19th, 2019. And I certainly want to welcome everyone here today. We're very, very glad to have you. Before we have our moment of silent meditation, uh, I have a few words that I would like to say. Uh, first, I want to remember a distinguished member of our community who passed away this week, Dr. Evelyn Schmidt. Dr. Schmidt was the longtime director of Lincoln Community Health Center and a pioneer in public health and an incredible presence in our community in so many ways. She asked that she not have a memorial service uh, but I think it would be, it's very appropriate for us to remember her here tonight. And she lived a long and very productive life. But we also know that today in our community, we lost someone who was not able to live a long and productive life. Zion Person young man, aged nine years old, was shot in a senseless, senseless shooting, murder in Durham within the past 24 hours. It is hard to fathom something as terrible as that. Someone who would shoot into, the car, into a car where there are several young children and shoot time and again into that car. And every time someone is shot in Durham, it tears a hole not only in that person, in their family, but in, in a neighborhood in a community, and in all of our hearts. We have to do everything we can every day to stop this violence. As long as we have the, the, the guns that we have on our street here in the United States, as long as we are doing nothing as a nation and as a state to stop the proliferation of guns, we are going to have this gun violence. We have got to take action to change that. We've also got to do everything that we can in our power as a community to change that. We have different ideas about what those things are but we need to be taking every action that we can to stop this senseless violence. I want to say that I was honored to be able to swear in Chief Davis as the president of the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives in New Orleans this past week. She has the confidence of, of this very significant national organization as their president. I think there were 2,000 people in the room when she was sworn in. And she also has the confidence of this council and of this city. And I know that our police department is up to the task. 
the rest of us up, need to be up to the task as well. We need to be surrounding our, our children with love. We need to be surrounding our residents with all the supports that they need, mental health services, addiction services, whatever it takes. So I ask that we bow our heads today, not just in a moment of silence, but in a moment of silence in which we remember Zion person and that we recall his memory and the wish and the hope and the work that we need to do to make sure that this senseless violence does not continue to occur in our community. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. And now I'm going to ask Councilmember Reese if he would please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, colleagues and members of the public. If it's your practice to do so, and if you're able, please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Council Member. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Shule. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. Here. Council Member Alston. Here. Council Member Caballero. Here. Council Member Freeman. Present. Council Member Middleton. Here. Council Member Reese. Here. Thank you. Now we're going to uh, have our ceremonial items, and uh, we're going to begin with our uh, sister city presentation for the, our friends from Celaya, Mexico, and I'm going to ask Council Members Reese and Middleton if they would please join me at the podium as our sister city representatives. The, the following people could come forward. Uh, Rebecca Lomelin Velasco, Ariel Augusto Ramos Horta, Raul Jimenez Areola. Could you please come forward? And anyone else in, your, in the delegation? And Brady, would you like the Sister Cities Committee to please come forward as well? Could the folks from the Sister Cities Committee please come forward? And we have Elsa Jimenez, our uh, interpreter tonight as well. Elsa, thank you so much for being here. We began tonight on a somber note, and we'll have more somber notes tonight as well, but this is a happy time, very happy time. Gracias a nuestros nuevos amigos de Celaya, nuestra ciudad hermana, por viajar a Durham para visitarnos. Gracias al miembro del Consejo Velasco por dirigir esta maravillosa delegación. Estamos muy felices de de ser una ciudad hermana de Celaya y esperamos una relación larga y productiva. Ahora leeré la proclamación. Whereas, Durham is a city that promotes mutual understanding and cooperation among all its citizens. You want to translate some of that, Elsa, or no? It's a lot. Yeah, it's a Maybe lot. you could do a little. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Durham is a city that believes in the dignity and worth of each individual regardless of the national origin of our citizens, which makes Durham a very diverse community, 
And whereas Durham desires to promote and maintain a wholesome climate of goodwill among peoples of all nations, and whereas the Durham community knows that inclusion, respect, and understanding of all those that work, play, worship, and live here promotes a community that we can be proud of, and whereas Sister Cities of Durham, Incorporated, has sister cities in the countries of China, Costa Rica, England, Greece, Japan, Mexico, Romania, Russia, and Tanzania, and, the board, and whereas the Board of Directors of Sister Cities of Durham and the C City Council have approved the application of the City of Celaya of Mexico to be a sister city with the City of Durham, North Carolina, and whereas the two cities have decided to enhance mutual understanding and friendly cooperation between American and Mexican people. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, on this day, on this day of August 19th, 2019, declare Durham, North Carolina to be the sister city of Celaya, Mexico, and hereby urge all citizens to honor the principles of equality and mutual benefit in the fields of education, economy, trade, science and technology, culture, environment, sustainable energy, sports, health, and personnel to promote common prosperity and development in both cities. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, this, the 19th day of August, 2019. And I'm going to present this to our city council member uh, for any comments that she might have. Thank you. Sorry. I am Rebecca Lomelin. Uh, I am the honor to be today in this beautiful city of Durham, North Carolina, representing Mrs. Elvira Paniagua Rodriguez, mayor of the city of Celaya, state of Guanajuato, Mexico, has due to force major was not able to attend this marvelous event. I thank in advance to the mayor of the city of Durham, North Carolina, Mr. Steve Shewell, to Mr. Claudia Velasco Osorio, BA General Consul of Mexico in North Carolina, to Sister Cities Association, our host, and to the governor's representative, Roy Cooper, who is today with us. Thank you very much for this warm reception. The city of Celaya may not be more than pleasure. Alone, we do so little. Together, we can do so much. Helen Keller. The Sister Cities program in America was created at the then President of the United States of America Initiative, the General Eisenhower, who in the year 1959 called it a massive program of understanding among American and the other people of the hemisphere. This program was denominated people to people, the basic principle of which the understanding is from countries of the world and the pace preservation. The strength of groups will be given by enjoying efforts, and today the municipal of Celaya is pleased to sign the twinning agreement between the city of Durham, North Carolina, and the city of Celaya, Guanajuato, with the hope of sharing our strength, simulation, or difference with the purpose of developing programs on stranger for, for strengthening friendship friendship and good will be benefit to the different fields to the cities. The present is demanding, but the future is promising. The share of international cooperation among with municipal lists of different countries reflects global, global community joining us today. Today we already had the chance to share our cajeta in the standing of typical candies, maybe the Sister Cities Association. And as the city's motto say, the 40 dulcindeo of the 
strong come for sweetness. The signature of this agreement is the reflection of the will of our countries for the hope, the understanding, the peace, the exchange of northern land and experiences and development of strange creative opportunities. Make a difference despite it, the tumor of typical foreign currencies hurting our countries. Local actions with global impact is what we starting today. Our brain of stand for the peace, equality, and the friendship. Thank you very much for all of our... Good evening. Um, my name is Patricia Perez. I'm the Deputy Consul General of the Consulate General of Mexico in Raleigh. On behalf of the Consul General of Mexico in Raleigh, Claudia Velasco, we would like to express our appreciation to Mayor Steve Schubel, City Council of Durham, city, Sister Cities of Durham, Raleigh Chapter of the Mexican Global Network, and everyone who has made this new collaboration possible. The Consulate General of Mexico has been following the development of this great relationship since its beginning, and we are very honored to witness such an important event. Our priority is to build bridges of our understanding through education, culture, and knowledge of our societies. Our difference and diversity enrich us. It is of the greatest significance to work together to enhance the development and well-being of the citizens of our countries, states, counties, and cities. The Sister Cities program is a valuable tool to make this possible. The visit of the Celaya delegation today to make this alliance true is the first step towards a better comprehension of our customs, our traditions, our people. Hopefully, more educational, cultural, and economic exchanges can come out of this agreement, helping both cities to continue growing and strengthening their ties to promote tolerance, friendship, and clear up stereotypes that unfortunately still exist. Durham is a diverse and welcoming city, which has demonstrated its willingness to accept priority, to embrace and empower its community, fostering trust, changing negative perceptions into positive ones, fighting fear, and giving hope to those who have lost it. Celaya is a rich and modern city with a vast culture, growing economy, and competitive technology, great automotive industries, and have made of Celaya their home as well as many American retirees that have fall in love with the state of Guanajuato and its people. Always welcoming, always attentive, always friendly. We are sure that this relationship will not only intensify our bilateral cooperation, but will open the door to more opportunities to other cities that want to become sisters and develop collaborative activities in benefit of both our countries. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Elsa Jimenez. I am the vice chair of the Sister Cities Celaya Committee, and I'm also the vice chair of the Mexican Network of Professionals. And I would like to start by saying thank you to you, Mayor Shuel, and to the honorable members of the City Council for letting us be here tonight. I would also like to say thank you to Celaya's council member, Rebecca Lomeli, for being here on behalf of Mayor Pañagua, who couldn't join us tonight. But she gave her trust and support for this project from the very beginning, which, by the way, for me represents a dream come true since I was born and raised in Celaya. Over two years ago, Mr. Brady Searles, the executive director of Sister Cities Durham, approached the Consulate of Mexico here in Raleigh with the intention of establishing a sisterhood with a Mexican city. The Consulate presented the proposal to the Raleigh chapter of Mexican professionals, an organization to which I belong to. And why not? I decided to nominate my hometown to the and the Sister Cities Committee, Mr. Brady, guided us all the way. This is how we created our committee. The members of the committee are Alberto Lopez, Juan de la Maza, and Guillermo Solares, who is also part of the Sister Cities Board. To you guys, I, I express my eternal gratitude. From the very beginning, we had members to join our group and support, like Dr. Carolina Vera, who recently traveled with a group of students of UNC School of Dentistry to Celaya to provide social service to orphans with her Proyecto Mexico. The exchange officially has started. 
We also have other members and volunteers to join our group, like Paula Travernier, Gerardo González, Gerardo Santoyo, Luis Scott, Jose Luis Martinez, Alejandro Peña, Enrique, Oscar. Thank you so much, guys, for all your help to make this happen. And last but not least, I would like to thank to the support of the Consulate of Mexico, to you, to you Consul Patricia, and of course, Monica Colin, Consul of Community Affairs, for believing in us from the very beginning. Today, as our committee spokeswoman, I would like to reiterate to you, Mayor Shul, and to, your, to you, Councilwoman Lomeli, our commitment that we have with both cities following the motto of Sister Cities of Durham, working toward world peace, one friendship, and one community at a time. Today, today's world is going through somewhat difficult times, and as civilians, we have two options. We can settle with today's status quo, or we can face the world as factors of change. And this sisterhood is the perfect channel to be factors of change. On behalf of the Celaya Sister Cities Committee, I want to say thank you to all of you tonight. And this is just the beginning of many things to come, many good things to come. I would like to end by quoting Dr. Martin Luther King by saying, let's build bridges, not walls. Thank you. Gracias a todos. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Elsa Jimenez, thank you for your words. And uh, it was really, and for the, to the Consul General, we're so glad to have you here in our chambers. Come back anytime. We're delighted. And to our sister city, Celaya, thank you so much. I wonder if the, their, their motto is out of strength sweetness, and I wonder if that has anything to do with their um, well-known, renowned candy that they make in Celaya, if that's part of the sweetness. So please save me a piece. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Now we're going to move on to our neighbor spotlight recipient, and I'm going to in, uh, invite Mrs. Vanessa Evans, a resident, PAC 2, and her family and friends and anyone else that she would like to have come with her to the podium to receive the award for the neighbor spotlight. Look into that if you want to. Please come up, everybody. Don't be shy. This is your opportunity to get on television. Ms. Evans, I'm going to give you this right away so that you can hold and enjoy this, this certificate. And then I'm going to uh, just read a little something about you, and then I'll offer you the microphone for a few words. Great, thank you. Sure. The Neighborhood Spotlight. Tonight's recipient is Vanessa Evans. Vanessa Evans is the recipient of the Neighbor Spotlight for the month of August 2019. The Neighbor Spotlight recognizes community members that have gone above and beyond in volunteering their time to serve the community. This month, Vanessa Evans, a resident of Bragtown, was nominated and selected because of the wonderful work she has done in her neighborhood, including, but not limited to, working for three years to secure, secure the funds for the renovation of the Lakeview Park, advocating for the reopening of the Bragtown Community Library, raising money and securing the resources for Bragtown Community Gardens, serving as chairperson of the Bragtown Community Association for two years. Congratulations, Vanessa Evans, on being the August Neighbor Spotlight for the City of Durham. And thank you for all the work you do to improve our community. And uh, we're so glad to have you and your friends and family here today. And I just want to congratulate you and thank you on behalf of all of the residents of Durham. I'm going to be short and sweet. Uh, I wanted to speak from my heart. Um, I first want to thank Mayor Shul, the City Council, for this wonderful award, as well as my community, uh, all of the residents that work behind me. I have to thank God, first of all, because he is the captain of my ship. Without him, I'm nothing. 
Um, I have Miss Jean behind me, who is the uh, president of our garden. She's 80 years old, so to have someone behind me, um, I look up to her. I also have um, Billy D, who has been working with me on a short basis, but she's working with me on the different de developments that are coming into um, Bragtown in the area in which I live. I would like to also thank RP, um, Peter Skilling, who was the first person I met. I'd like to thank John, um, who has been helping me through DataWorks. Uh, they're sitting out in the audience. I'd like to thank Mamie, who has also been helping me to um, facilitate my meetings and how to um, gather people for my meetings that I have within my community. I would like to say where I live is a very rich, rich community. Uh, where I stay, it was once slave plantation land uh, owned by the Camerons, um, but now I can say it was a place where people were freed and black people were able to uh, settle and become sharecroppers and build and develop their own land and businesses. So I'm proud to say that I'm a part of a community that is steady growing. There are things that are changing along with gentrification, but I'm hoping that through the gentrification there will still be affordable housing there will be places for everyone to live, not just those who are rich, but middle class and those who are on low income, fixed income, whatever it may be. Because I feel Durham is a place for all people. And I know we have the blueprint for that. And I thank you again, Mayor Shu, for all that you've been doing. And I know I've been in your face a lot <laughs> lately in the, uh, city council meetings and other places. But I thank each of you for everything. And I would like to thank Bragtown again and its residents for all the hard work that they do. Because this is not just me. It's my community that's doing what we're doing. Thank you. So well deserved. So well deserved. Thank you. Beautiful remarks. Sure, sure. Okay, come on, everybody. Come on, everybody, get in the picture. <laughs> come on, everybody, just get in the picture. Just move, y'all. Let's get this chain up. Thank you. Those were really good ceremonial items. And now we're going to turn to announcements by members of the council. Council Member Caballero. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, colleagues. And for those of us who are able to join us, thank you. Um, I just wanted to echo a lot of what you already shared this evening. Today was uh, a horrific day in our city. I think many of us, many of us are, are reeling from today's news uh, and from the violence that we're seeing across our country due to gun violence. Uh, the last time we gathered here was just a few days after El Paso and the Dayton, Ohio shootings. And so I think it's ever present. And sadly, we are seeing uh, the effects in a very horrifying way. Uh, my kids cross that intersection almost every single day on their way home from school. It was uh, heart-wrenching news to hear. And so I am asking that um, I'm thinking about the person family uh, my thoughts and prayers are with you. Um, and I'm asking our council uh, to go ahead and, and I would like to take it up in our next, or in a work session soon, uh, to go ahead and to, uh, think about creating, I'm doing the work to create a uh, community safety task force. So that's something I will be bringing up at a work session. Thank you very much, Councilmember Caballero, for your remarks. Um, as you know, the uh, protocol is that if you uh, please bring that up again in our work session Thursday, and then we can take it up at a future work session. But thank you thank so you. much for those remarks, and we will do that. Thank you. Council Member Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, um, people in our city who do not hold elective office and who do not control the imprimatur of our city have declared a state of emergency. I think we should join them in that. Zion, 
person. I want his name to echo in this chamber. Zion person was nine years old on his way to get ice cream because that's your job when you're nine years old. You eat ice cream. You do papa wheelies on your bike and you talk about who the cutest kid in the class is. That's your job. Our job as adults and the people in charge is to keep them safe. This afternoon, I had the most heart-wrenching phone call I've ever been on in my life. I spoke to Zion's aunt who was driving the vehicle when the shots were fired. Her nephew was killed and her son was injured. There were barely any words used in the conversation because it was just sobbing. And I asked her, what would you like me to say to the city? What do you want the city to know? And all she could get out was, why did this have to happen? We were on our way to get ice cream. It is a state of emergency in our city, whether or not we declare it or not. So, Mr. Mayor, on this evening, and I, I thank um, Councilor Caballero, and I thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, for your comments. I, I want to... Um, I want to challenge uh, my colleagues tonight. I want to challenge this government because I believe our ability to console this family and console other families, and by the way, Zion is a member uh, of a club. We know his name tonight, but there are hundreds of children in Durham every night that duck and cover because of gunfire. They're being trained to jump off of their bikes and hide behind trash cans every night. We know his name because he died. So, Mr. Mayor, I'm challenging my colleagues that we come up with a concrete plan and be able to tell the people of the city what our plan is for gun violence, just like we did for bike paths. The planet is dying, and we passed a very bold resolution. Children are dead. So what is our plan? If it's not shot spotter, fine. If it's not hiring more police, fine. If there is something in the Durham Beyond Policing Plan that can address this type of stuff, we should pass it right now. We should declare an emergency, and we should make appropriations mid-cycle. We're the council. We can do that. If there's something in there, I'm voting for it because it's a state of emergency. I know our hearts are broken, and I know that we care. But in order to have the moral authority, just like we now have the moral authority to tell employers to pay a living wage because we upped our salary to, to $15 an hour, we need to be able to point to something we've done concretely. Show me the money. What are we going to spend money on? Mm. What are we going to do? Where are the protected lanes in Zion's neighborhood? I'm asking for this council to put this city on emergency footing when it comes to this issue. There is no help coming from Washington. There is no help coming from the state. We are our help. It begins here. And if it's none of the things that we voted down, tell me what to vote up and I'll be the first person to make the motion. Tell me what to do. Our prayers are with Zion's family. Our prayers are with the other children tonight who will be hiding in bathtubs because of gunfire. There is a hole in the heart of our city tonight. A hole. I come from a community where we take care of each other's family. That was all our sons. That was all our nephew. That was all our play cousin. That was all our little man man. Let's show them how serious we are by doing something, not just taking stuff out the budget. Let's vote on something. Our hearts belong to your family tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Council Member, for those heartfelt remarks. Other Council Members? Anyone else? Council Member Freeman? I, I um, hesitate to say much, recognizing that 
I know that I'm always so tearful on these issues and um, not trying to go there, but it's, it's really hard noting that a few weeks ago I had to endure the shock and the dismay of gunfire in front of my own very house, and I am not okay with it. And I'm telling you right now, there will be police presence in my neighborhood. I don't care what anyone has to say about it. That being said, I recognize that there are a lot of different views on this issue. And the one view that has risen is not that of the consensus of the community. And I, want to, I, would, I just want to hold it up and say, even though more police does not prevent the crime, it can, it can dissuade. It does, we don't have a number for the number of shootings or deaths or robberies or break-ins for those that have been avoided because of their presence. And it is not okay to sit here and say a community task force is what we're gonna do. I just wanna be clear that that is not enough because it could have been Ansel, and it could have been Antoine, and it could have been Adriana out front of my own house, and there is no gang in my neighborhood. So it's not about shooting at each other. This is, at sh this is more than that. There are people on the street who are minding their very own business, and it is not okay to just say that we're down 48%, knowing that 52% is still out there. We should be pushing for zero. That means no deaths. I don't care that it's impossible. We should be doing everything in our power to make sure that the children in this community are safe. I cannot understand it. I refuse to accept it. And I'm, <sighs> this is not the end of this conversation. I appreciate the mayor making his statements. I appreciate all the work and time that people have poured into this conversation because I know that people care, but it's not enough to care, and it's not enough to have the conversations. I, we need action, and that action doesn't have to come from the police department. It can come from the community. I can tell you that no one reported in my neighborhood, and that hurt me to my core because I know that it's out of fear. I can't live in fear. I cannot do it. And I don't think it's acceptable to ask people who live in these communities who experience gunshots every single night because they're not reported to continue to accept that. So, just know that this is gonna be an ongoing conversation and we've got work to do. So whatever it is, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm echoing Councilmember Middleton and saying, like, I understand we don't need more police officers. I understand, you know, we need a community task force. I understand all of the things that have been brought forward, but what I'm not understanding is that there is another dead child in our community tonight. There's another child shot in our community tonight. And each time those text messages or information comes, I mean, these press releases, my heart stops because I know that these kids are out here living their best life and we've got to do more. We just have to. Thank you. Thank you very much for your heartfelt words, Council Member. Anyone else have any announcements? Any words? Okay. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. And I think we all know that we have work to do. I'm now going to turn to priority items. First by the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Good evening, everyone. Uh, priority items this evening from the city manager's office uh, is agenda item number 16, the Oregon Street closing public hearing at the request of the petitioner uh, this item is referred back to the administration. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, we'll now have a motion on the manager's priority item. So moved. 
Second. It's been moved and seconded that we accept the manager's priority item. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Madam Attorney, any priority items tonight? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. We do not have any priority items this evening. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Good evening, everyone. Um, the City Clerk's Office would like to present the refreshed Board, Committee, and Commission video. And uh, it's a recruitment video for our volunteers. And uh, roll it, DTN. Great, thank you. Roll it. I count on Durham for awesome adventures and great bike shops. I know I can count on Durham for great sports in every season. I always count on Durham for amazing cultural events. I count on Durham for its innovative ideas and the determination to bring them to life. I count on Durham for community and a place for everyone. I count on Durham to do a good job and to celebrate our success. Did you know that the city of Durham counts on these individuals? In a city of more than 260,000 people, you're looking at residents who are making their voices count people who care about the past, the present, and the future of the city of Durham. And you know what? It doesn't matter how mature or young, whether you're passionate about the economy, the art scene, or the plight of the homeless. In fact, we have nearly 30 boards, committees, and commissions that you can participate on. The requirements are to be a Durham City resident and be current on your Durham City and County taxes. Durham is your home. You can count on Durham to be there for you. Can we count on you to be there for our city? Can we count on you to be there for Durham? Can we count on you to be there for our city? Can we count on you to be there for Durham? So come on, get involved, apply today. We can count on Durham, but can Durham count on you? Great job. Wow, Laverne was a star, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, and I assume that you all will be working with our uh, public affairs staff to make that available to the world. And uh, congratulations to the clerk's office. Thank you. And the public affairs staff. And the public affairs staff, thank you. Good job, great video. All right, uh, we'll now move on to our consent agenda. The consent agenda is uh, comprised of items which the council has worked on in the past. Uh, uh, the consent agenda can be approved by a single vote of the council. Items can be removed from the consent agenda by any member of the council or by any member of the public. And if an item is removed, it is held until the end of the meeting when we would then take action on it. Uh, item one, Durham Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission appointments. <clears throat> Excuse me, item two, Historic Preservation Commission reappointments. Item three, Durham Housing Authority Board of Commissioners reappointment. <laughs> item four, City County International City County Management Association Local Government Management Fellow and Interlocal Agreement. Item five, Maintenance Support for Performance Management System. Item six, National League of Cities Grant Award for Cities Addressing Fines and Fees Equitably. Item seven, EB 5703 LaSalle Street Sidewalk Project Supplemental Agreement. Item eight, EB 5704 Rainer Street Sidewalk Project Supplemental Agreement. Item nine, EB 5715 North Duke Street Sidewalk Project Supplemental Agreement. Item 10, proposed sale of an easement across a portion of Twin Lakes Park to Dan Ryan Builders, North Carolina, LLC. Item 11, 2019 National Recreation and Park Association Meet Me at the Park Grant Agreement and Budget Ordinance. Item 12, amendment to the interlocal agreement between the City of Durham and Durham County. The City provide recycling processing and haul service to Durham County for target recycling materials. Item 13, license and maintenance agreement for the City Works software upgrade. And that completes the consent agenda. And I will now accept an emotion, a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. Madam Clerk, please open the vote. Please close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. We'll now uh, proceed to the general business agenda, public hearings. 
and uh, item 16 has been referred back to the administration. So we have only one more item tonight. It's item 17, Tower View Business Center MTC I-40 buffer reduction. And as you all know, that this is a uh, quasi-judicial matter. Quasi-judicial matters have become the favorite activity of our city council, and so I'm extremely glad <laughs> that we have another one back before us tonight. The next matter is agenda item 17, which includes a major special use permit application for the Tower View Business Center MTC I-40 buffer reduction application number M180002. The hearing in this matter is judicial in nature and will be conducted in accordance with special safeguards. Witnesses must be sworn in. They are subject to cross-examination and written evidence must be offered for incorporation into the record. People who wish to testify should have signed up on the special sheet for this hearing at the clerk station. I think in the set of the special sheet this year, we used, this time we used the yellow cards. Is that correct? Yeah. If you've not already done so, please go to the clerk station now and sign in. Anyone who plans to testify, including city staff, should now go to the clerk station to be sworn in or give your affirmation and then please return to your seat. So would all those, uh, including city staff, who will be testifying or could be testifying, uh, please uh, go to the clerk station where she will swear you in. <clears throat> left hand on the Bible if you can. Please affirm or swear, repeat after me, so help you God by saying I do after I give the oath and affirmation. Do you solemnly swear, so help you God, or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, to the best of your ability? I do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Do any council members need to withdraw from consideration of this case because of a conflict that will prevent them from rendering a fair and impartial decision in this matter? Uh -huh. Council Member Freeman had me gone there for a minute. Uh, have any council members heard information about this case other than what may have been presented at work session or in the staff report? If so, please disclose that information at this time. Before we begin, I would like a representative or an attorney for the applicant and for any opponents to come to the microphone and identify yourself to the council and then take a seat in the front row. Neil Ghosh, attorney for the applicant. Bill Bryan, attorney for the applicant, uh, Morningstar Law Group, 112 West Main Street. Thank you. Are there any attorneys for any opponents? Any attorneys for any opponents? Thank you so much. If an attorney or representative wishes to cross-examine a witness, please raise your hand immediately after the witness has testified, and I will recognize you. All written information, including maps you want to be considered, should be officially submitted as evidence. Copies of evidence you want to have admitted, with the exception of the staff report and attachments, should be given to the city attorney and to the opposing side, if any, and I believe that evidence has already been passed to the city attorney. Is that correct? And the attorney is reviewing it at this time. Each side may raise objections to the admission of evidence on the basis of relevance, hearsay, or any other evidentiary ground. Questions concerning admissibility will be handled by the city attorney. Please do not hand anything directly to council members until it has first been reviewed by the city attorney and has been admitted as evidence. We'll first hear from city staff who have studied the request, then from the applicant, and then from opponents to the application, if any. I'm going to ask the city attorney if she's had an opportunity to review the evidence. I have, Mr. Mayor, and it appears to be in order for the presentation of expert witnesses. Then I will... Um... Would you like to accept... <laughs> yes, I would. ...the I Tower would. View Business Center Major Transportation Corridor uh, package of exhibits from the petitioner? Thank you. I very much would, Into Madam evidence. Attorney, and thank you for your assistance. Sure. We will now open the hearing and hear from city staff. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eliza Monroe, representing the Planning Department. I would like to state for the record that all Planning Department hearing items have been advertised and noticed in accordance with state and local law, and affidavits of all notices are on file in the Planning Department. Planning staff requests that all agenda materials submitted for the public hearing be made part of the public record with any necessary corrections as noted. <coughs> Staff would like to note for the record a correction within the staff report on page six of attachment three, where it states that the development plan was approved prior to the requirement of the major transportation corridor, otherwise known as MTC buffer. A 100 foot buffer was a required component of the development plan done in 1993. 
Request for a major special use permit, M1800002, and a major site plan, D1800246, have been received from Bill Bryan with Bill Morningstar Law Group, representing Nelson Partners and Milestone Developments, LLC, respectively, to reduce the required MTC buffer width from 100 feet to 40 feet to construct a two-story office building totaling 12,452 square feet on a 1.61 acre site. Zoned Light Industrial D, which um, stands for Development Plan, LID, and located within the Triangle Metro Center Commercial Neighborhood CN tier. The buffer width and the amount of landscape materials required may be reduced through the issuance of a major special use permit, otherwise referred to as MSUP, by the governing body pursuant to Unified Development Ordinance, UDO, section 4.9.3D.2. When a site plan is associated with a major special use permit, that site plan shall, be, shall also be considered a major site plan, which requires governing body approval. If the council approves the major special use permit, then the council should also consider the approval of the associated major site plan case, D1800246. The site plan item does not require public hearing, but it does require a separate vote for approval. If the council elects to deny the major special use permit, the associated major site plan should not be approved as the site plan would not be in compliance with the applicable UDO standards. The first item that requires action is the public hearing for item for the major special use permit M1800002. The applicant is requesting approval of a 60% buffer reduction from 100 feet to 40 feet on the northeastern side of the site. A site plan has been submitted in conjunction with this request. It will be attachment 3B within your packet. That site plan is currently under review and is clear of comments. Per UDO section 3.9.8, there are four general findings and 13 review factors that must be addressed in order to grant a use permit. The findings and review factors are identified in the staff report, attachment 3, and the application sub-attachment 3A. The four findings are that the proposed use is, one, in harmony with the area and not substantially injurious to the value of properties in the general vicinity, two, in conformance with all, major, with all special requirements applicable to the use, three, will not adversely affect the health or safety of the public, and four, will not adequately address, will adequately, with, will adequately address the review factors identified below. Those 13 review factors are circulation, parking and loading, service entrances and areas, lighting, signs, utilities, open spaces, environmental protection, screening, buffering, and landscaping, effect on adjacent property, including but not limited to noise, odor, lighting, and traffic, compatibility, consistency with policy, and any other factors deemed necessary by the Unified Development Ordinance. Staff has analyzed the application and finds that most of the factors above meet ordinance compliance based on the site plan submitted. Effects on adjacent properties and compatibility are not addressed through site plan review. The applicant must provide evidence to demonstrate that the findings and review factors are being met. If the governing body fails to find conformance with the conditions and factors listed, then the proposed permit must be denied. However, if the applicant provides evidence that demonstrates the findings and review factors are being met, the governing body must approve the use permit. Planning staff will make a recommendation for the use permit prior to a vote on the public hearing after all evidence has been presented, and staff is available for any questions related to the permit request. If there are no questions from staff at this time, then I will turn the floor over to the applicant to present their case. Thank you, Ms. Monroe. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to ask, are there any questions uh, from council members at this time for staff? Any questions from council or any party for staff? Just one question. The essential part of this is that the buffer is being reduced based on what it was in 1993. They're requesting, um, they're requesting a buffer reduction from the required 100 feet to 40 feet, so 60%. And that was based on a rule set when? In 1993, there was a development plan done, case B P93-70, um, and that case, as well as the ordinance at the time, requires a 100-foot buffer on that side of the property. And there may be someone behind me who might have additional comment. <laughs> Jessica Dockery, Planning Department. The MTC buffers are still in place in the current UDO. Thank you. Any other questions at this time? 
Uh, council members, uh, before we turn to the applicant, uh, my uh, agenda says we need a motion to conduct a quasi-judicial public hearing and receive evidence. So moved. Second. We didn't do that at our last major special use permit hearings, but mm -hmm. we're going to do it tonight. I don't think it'll hurt. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we conduct a quasi-judicial public hearing and receive evidence regarding the uh, adoption of an order approving uh, this uh, major sp uh, special use permit. Uh, Madam Clerk, please open the vote. Please close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. And Madam Attorney, maybe we better get ourselves straight on whether or not we need that next time. So, yeah, we, 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 uh, we didn't do it last time. We did it this time, so probably we ought to have a consistent practice. Have a consistent practice. Thank you. All righty. Um, and now we will hear from the applicant. Good evening, Mayor Shul, Mayor Pro Tem Johnson, and members of the City Council. My name is Neil Ghosh. I'm an attorney with the Morningstar Law Group at 112 West Main Street here in Durham, and I'm here tonight back for your favorite thing, quasi-judicial hearings. Uh, I'm here tonight representing Nelson Partners, the owners of property at 4804 Page Creek Lane here in Durham. Uh, tonight, we will present evidence in support of the application for a reduction in the major transportation corridor buffer uh, along the portion of the site adjacent to the off-ramp for I-40 at Page Road exit. This permit relates only to the buffer reduction, and it does not relate to the office building use itself, which is a generally permitted use in this location. So the evidence tonight will be focused upon the impact of the buffer reduction and will not address the more general uh, aspects of the use. Mm -hmm. There also is a major site plan before you. That site plan has been reviewed by staff and is clear of all comments and is pending your approval. Uh, the site plan is clean and ready to move forward upon your grant of the special use permit. As staff mentioned, we are requesting a 60% reduction in the buffer width. At this time, I would ask that all materials referred to are used by our witnesses, including the staff report and all of its attachments, our applications, the site plan, and any other materials be entered into the record and that judicial notice be taken with regard to the contents of the UDO, the comprehensive plan, and any other plans adopted by the city and county of Durham. I will hereby admit them to the record. I think I did so before, but I'll do it again just in case. Thank you. In addition to exhibits, we intend to offer expert opinion on certain aspects of the case. Um, I would like to enter into evidence, well, already entered into evidence is the resumes of, well, exhibit A is the resume of Mr. Bill Daniel. He is our head project land planner. He developed the site plan that's before you. We also have the resume of Mr. Jarvis Martin. That is exhibit B. Mr. Martin is a certified real estate appraiser in the state of North Carolina. Uh, behind his resume is the report he prepared following the study that he conducted for this project. Also included in the exhibit packet as Exhibit C is a copy of the recorded plat that is associated with an NCDOT taking, which we will speak about. As you know, this is a quasi-judicial hearing, and you all are acting as your own Board of Adjustment, so just like the Board of Adjustment you can rely only upon the competent material and substantial evidence entered into the record at this hearing. This site is across the street from the former Quintiles building, which is now IQVIA. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. So this is near the I-40 uh, Page Road exit. It's across the street from the former Quintiles building in what is known as the Creekstone Office Park. Uh, the rear of this property, and by rear I mean the east side of this property, abuts the off-ramp for the Page Road exit. The site is part of an overall office park that was planned years ago, and it remains one of the last pieces developed in the, in the office park. The development plan for the office park was approved in 1993. The 100-foot major transportation corridor buffer was in place in 1993, and the development plan accommodated the full extent of the major transportation corridor. What has changed since that time is the design of the I-40 interchange and therefore the shape of this parcel. 
uh, our first witness is a member of the ownership group, and he was involved with the project at the time that these changes were going on. His name is Carlton Midget, and I will at this time ask him to tell you a little bit more about that. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Good evening. Mayor and members of the council, thanks for the opportunity to appear before you tonight. I am Carlton Midget, and I'm one of the members of the uh, Creekstone Office Park origination group and we got the original development plan and rezoning approved over 25 years ago. Uh, as Neil mentioned, the original development plan included the full extent of the 100-foot MTC buffer. Uh, that rezoning was approved in 1993. In the late 90s, NCDOT came along and finalized the design for the Page Road off-ramp. Uh, its design ran adjacent to this site and required that DOT condemn some of our property uh, and specifically a portion of this track. Uh, if the taking effectively shrunk the width of the parcel, as you can see in the plat, uh, which I believe is your uh, Exhibit C, the taking affected 1.3 acres in total. The site already had a development plan approved, which accommodated the full 100-foot MTC buffer but the parcel then shrank with the condemnation. Uh, the UDO applies the MTC buffer from the edge of the I-40 right away, which includes the off-ramp regardless of the development plan or the subsequent NCDOT taking. So when the NCDOT took a large piece of the property, the buffer just slid over to the remainder track, the 100-foot buffer. This results in a double impact on a relatively small parcel. The first application of the MTC was at the time the development plan was approved in 1993. The second application of the buffer was after the NCDOT taking in 1998. This double impact renders the parcel largely undevelopable without the required special use permit allowing the MTC buffer reduction, which is why we're here tonight. And this is the reason that this otherwise well-located track has not seen any development in over two decades. Uh, we are, of course, delighted that the buyer has come up and, and has, has an ability to work with this site and an excellent use for the property as an office building if and only if this buffer can be reduced. And we sincerely hope that you'll grant the request before you tonight. Uh, thank you for your time and attention. Unless there are questions for me about the history of the property, I'll turn the matter over to Mr. Daniels, the engineer. Thank you, Mr. Midget. Is there, are there any questions for Mr. Midget at this time? Thank you so much. Thank you all. Our next witness will be Mr. Bill Daniel. I am proffering him as an expert witness. He was the head site planner, and his resume is uh, Exhibit A in your packet. Thank you. Mr. Shul, council members, uh, my name is Bill Daniel with William G. Daniel and Associates. Uh, as Neil stated, my resume is included in that packet as Exhibit A. Our firm was engaged um, by the developer uh, to design the site plan. I've overseen that, uh, those services. I'm going to testify about the factors uh, that you must consider in your review of our application. As Neil mentioned, the site is part of a previously approved development plan, which has a common scheme for development. The parcels in this office park originally were designed and intended to operate as a cohesive unit. The site plan and the requested reduction before you tonight uh, carry out that expectation for this parcel. Additionally, I think it's important to note that the parcel immediately south of this site, which is a hotel, uh, was developed with a 60% reduction uh, in the buffer. That's the exact uh, level of reduction that we're requesting for this adjacent site. Therefore, it's my professional opinion that the requested MTC reduction is in harmony with properties in the general vicinity because it is the same reduction which was previously granted and it will allow the site to be developed in the same manner as the surrounding properties. 
As with the parcel to the south, the buffer reduction will not affect the public health and safety. To the contrary, it could be said the reduced buffer will be beneficial. While natural buffers along the main travel ways of I-40 certainly make sense, along an off-ramp, buffers tend to obscure the view that commuters have of the conditions on the road to which they are exiting and also of the locations near the intersection to which they may be traveling. A reduced buffer will better enable commuters to observe what it is they're driving towards when they take the ramp. Therefore, in my professional opinion, this buffer reduction will enhance public health and safety. Certainly, the buffer reduction in this area does nothing to reduce the public health and safety. There are 13 review factors that must be considered for every special use permit. In this case, a special use permit is for the MTC reduction only, so several of the factors just don't apply. I'll run through these quickly and make a note of those which do not apply and uh, address the reasons why they do not apply. The first is circulation. Our site plan, including the MTC reduction, does not affect the current width, alignment, or any other dimension of the existing off-ramp or otherwise affect circulation in the area. As a result, the requested reduction has no impact on traffic circulation, either the ramp or on Page Road. On the site, the MTC reduction improves circulation by allowing more developable width to accommodate drive aisles that are wide enough for safe turning movements. In other words, it gives us more room in which to construct internal traffic moving elements, aisles and roadways. The same is true of parking and loading. The reduction will allow adequate on-site parking to be developed without affecting any aspect of the off-ramp or having any impact on the adjacent properties. No service entrances or access points of any kind are sought to or from the ramp along the, which the reduction is sought. All access to the site will be from Page Creek Lane only. All lighting will be compliant with UDO requirements, which address spillover lighting onto adjacent properties, including the I-40 right-of-way. Any sign sought later for the building will be compliant with the UDO and will be uh, approved through the separate process obtained in the UDO. The requested reduction has no effect on utilities servicing the site. The utilities are not routed through the area in which the reduction is sought. As noted in the staff report, the open space requirement is not applicable in our request, to our request by virtue of being in the compact area. There are no environmentally sensitive features on this site, so this factor does not apply. The next factor deals with screening, buffering, and landscaping. The site plan shows that existing vegetation within the undisturbed buffer of the MTC buffer area will remain, and that supplemental plantings will be required where the existing vegetation is insufficient to achieve the required level of opacity. This ensures that there will be adequate screening of the highway from adjacent uses, including, including this new building. In other words, we are not relying solely on the existing vegetation and the remaining buffer width for screening. Regarding compatibility, one of the primary effects that the requested reduction will have on nearby properties is to make our site more compatible with those properties. As we've mentioned, the site plan is consistent with the original development plan that was approved for the parcel. The other properties in the area are developed with office buildings or supporting amenities, like the adjacent hotel, while our property is a vacant lot. Moreover, the parcel to the south has the same buffer reduction which we're requesting. Therefore, development of the site pursuant to the proposed site plan, which is based upon the reduction of the MTC buffer through this special use permit, will enhance the compatibility of the site with the neighboring land uses. Finally, the reduction is consistent with policy. The intent of the MTC buffer is to establish a natural buffer between uses and the main travel lanes of major thoroughfare corridors. Exit ramps generally, of course, are a design feature of major thoroughfares, but they do not present the same challenges as do the main travel lanes. Exit ramps are signal controlled approaches and do not experience the same rates of speed that main travel lanes do and the concern about roadside distractions is less, since drivers who are exiting by definition are looking for their turn or the location to which they are headed 
and therefore are more alert to their surroundings. As a result, the need for buffers along exit ramps is far less than along the main portion of the, board, of the corridor. Aside from 13 review factors that I've just addressed, requests for special use permits allowing MTC reductions have two other factors which must be considered. Their topography and size. As you can see on the existing conditions page of the site plan, there's about 15 feet of vertical drop within the 30 feet of the parcel closest to I-40, sloping down to I-40. North to south, the property drops about 22 feet in elevation over the entire site. This topography is challenging, but the requested reduction allows us to take advantage of the flattest portions of the site. Regarding size, at its narrowest point, the existing site is only 185 feet wide. A full MTC buffer would reduce the developable width of this point to 85 feet, which is prohibitively narrow for any reasonable use of the property, certainly for this use. Moreover, a full MTC buffer on the property would encumber 0.85 acres, which is more than half of the parcel's total area. As the property owner mentioned, the NCDOT taking and subsequent application of the full MTC buffer renders the original parcel pretty much undevelopable. The requested reduction will provide adequate screening along the off-ramp while maintaining the full 100-foot buffer along the main travel lanes of I-40. All of this can be achieved without any detriment to the public health and safety and in a manner which is in harmony and compatible with surrounding properties. The MTC reduction which was granted for the parcel of the South, is a strong precedent for this request. The result of granting the reduction we're requesting will be no different than what was already done in that area. Your approval of the special use permit allowing the requested reduction will allow for new development on a parcel that has long remained vacant, thereby improving the city's tax base and creating additional employment opportunities. If you have any questions for me, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Otherwise, our next witness will be Mr. Jarvis Martin. Thank you so much, Mr. Daniel. Colleagues, are there any questions at this point for Mr. Daniel? Any questions? All righty, Mr. Martin, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Our next witness is Mr. Jarvis Martin. Again, I'm proffering him as an expert uh, in real estate appraisal. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Good evening. My name is Jarvis Martin. I'm a state certified general appraiser. And I'm here tonight at the request of the applicant to provide my opinion as it relates to the reduction impact of this buffer. You have my resume and I'll be glad to answer any questions about my credentials uh, if needed. Our firm was employed to look at the proposed reduction of the buffer and how it might impact adjacent and surrounding properties. It is important to note that my testimony tonight is dealing with the reduction of the buffer and not the use of the facility. In looking at the property, I discovered that the adjoining hotel, which is south of it, which is also developed with a 40-foot buffer, so recently- Mr. Four, Martin, would you back on just a little bit away from the microphone? Yeah, we're getting a little feedback. Thank you. Thank you. So for $4.8 million, it is an improved structure and used as a motel. I reached out and contacted the owner and operator of this facility to ask them some questions about his purchase and if he knew about the buffer reduction, in which he did, that he knew the property was adjacent to the Page Road off-ramp. In my conversation with him, he indicated that the location of this property and the buffer reduction had no impact on his decision to buy this property due to the strong occupancy that the hotel uh, demonstrated. I also asked him about the ongoing operations and he indicated that they have had no major uh, concerns that occasionally they do have uh, occupants who occupy a room on the east side of the building will make a comment about the extent of the noise uh, from Interstate Highway 40. But those uh, comments come very 
uh, sparingly and that he does not have any way to measure any negative impact and do not believe it is uh, a minor concern uh, to him. It is also important to note that other properties in the business center also uh, have a, uh, buffers adjacent to the right-of-way. With that being said, uh, it is my opinion that the reduction of the buffer has no negative impact on I-40 and the off-ramp uh, of Page Road, which is to the east of this property, and that the reduction of the buffer uh, will have no impact on nearby and surrounding properties, as demonstrated by the recent sale of the hotel. Also, in doing additional research, research uh, I was able to locate within a radius of one mile of this property over 40 non-residential sales that have occurred in the past two years that demonstrate a very strong market activity and high demand for businesses uh, in this area, given any uh, possibility of the uh, buffer reduction and uh, no impact. With that being said, it is my professional opinion that the reduction of the buffer will have no negative impact on the surrounding properties and adjacent property. Given the fact that the property to the south, the hotel, has already been developed with a comparable 40-foot buffer, it is proof that there is a market for this type of property and granting this property the approval of a special um, use permit will not have any inverse impact. With that, I'm open for questions. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Colleagues, any questions? Councilmember Freeman? Actually, just a comment. I just really wanted to share that I appreciate you speaking to the neighbor to the south Thank directly. You. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Martin. Thank you all. Thank you, and for the record, this is Neil Ghosh, attorney for the applicant, speaking again. Uh, at this time, I again would like to move into evidence any exhibits relied upon by or referred to by the witnesses that were not already entered into the record. Um, as mentioned at the beginning of this hearing, it's our burden to submit competent material, substantial evidence into the record showing that our proposal has met all of the requirements of the UDO for the approval of the requested major special use permit and the site plan. Mr. Daniel did a good job of drawing your attention to the evidence in the record, which shows that the site has been designed in conformance with all applicable UDO standards. His firm has worked with your staff to make sure that, that exactly that happened. Uh, he also explained which of the 13 review factors are affected by the proposed reduction and what we have done, how we have addressed them, including the two additional factors that are specific to any MTC reduction. Mr. Martin analyzed the effect that the reduction might have on neighboring property values. He concluded that property values will not be adversely impacted by the requested reduction. And Mr. Midget spoke to you a little bit about how the original development plan accommodated a full 100-foot MTC buffer, uh, and that in 1998, NCDOT took some property which shifted that buffer over as a result in a way that encumbers most of this parcel and, th and therefore makes it mostly undevelopable without the requested MTC reduction. And that's why we're here today. Uh, the site plan has been reviewed and approved by all the relevant departments and is subject to your final approval. So the only thing remaining for both of these items, the special use permit and the site plan, is your approval tonight. All of the competent material substantial evidence in the record shows that the applicant has met all of the requirements in the UDO for your approval of the requested major special use permit and the site plan. So we respectfully ask for your approval of both tonight, and I thank you for your time, and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Gosh. Thank you. Are there any questions at this time for the applicant or any of the applicant's witnesses? Um, if not, uh, are there any opponents to this application who would like to speak? Are there any opponents or representative of any po opponents to this application who would like to speak? I believe at this time 
we will ask the staff if they have a recommendation to make on this matter. Eliza Monroe with the Planning Department. Staff recommends approval of the major special use permit, case number M1800002, provided that the improvement shall be substantially consistent with the plans and information submitted to the council as a part of the application. Thank you very much, Ms. Monroe, for that recommendation. Colleagues, are there any questions uh, at this time for staff or the applicant? Just one. I know that we've alluded to that this is this case is not surrounding the use of the building. Is the 60 feet that you're taking into account for the buffer going to be included into the site as a like what is it? What would be the use that you would put on that additional 60 feet? Like how does that? So we're requesting the buffer reduction to allow the construction of a two-story office building and the associated on-site parking. So within the the 40 remaining feet, that's all going to be vegetation. Uh, it's going to be existing vegetation, and it will be supplemented with additional vegetation it, to meet the UDA-required opacity. And then in the additional 60 feet that would be picked up, that's an area that, with this reduction, we would be able to grade and develop. So, I'll, I mean, that is essentially the flattest part of the site, so that is where the building is going. That is where the parking the is going. Will be right there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions at this time for the applicant or for staff? Any discussion by members of the council? Will there be any housing on the, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All righty, uh, if not, then I'm going to ask for a motion that we grant the permit. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we grant the permit as recommended by staff. Madam Clerk, please open the vote. Please close the vote. And the motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Now we uh, need a motion to approve the major site plan. So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve the major site plan. Madam Clerk, please open the vote. Please close the vote. And the motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Thank you all. Appreciate your being here. Uh, I do want to mention. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank yes, you, sir. ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Bryan, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Ghosh. Thank you all. I do want to mention, uh, while Mr. Bryan and Mr. Ghosh are still here, uh, to our planning department, uh, this does, again, raise at least for me the question about what our uh, prerogatives are in terms of s deciding what comes before us as a special use permit and what is a legislative matter. I know we talked about that. Um, last week and just want to urge you all to continue to think about that. We certainly will, Mr. Mayor. Pat Young with the Planning Department. Just um, the MTB, MTC buffer encroachment that you all just heard prior to the UDO um, being adopted in 2006 was uh, heard by the Board of Adjustment as a minor special use permit. I see. The adjacent site, the Doubletree Hotel, that case was heard by. So we certainly um, have evolved and evaluated over time a number of items that were previously major special use permits um, in 2015 and 16 became minor special use permits. There are, so are there a very small number of these who will okay. continue to assess and evaluate and review with the administration and you uh, about which types of cases you want to see. We have full trust in your judgment on that, and we're very appreciative of you all considering uh, continuing to give it consideration. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Council members, I believe that there is no more business to come before this body, and I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned at... 823. 823. Thank you.